Credit Suisse financial crisis explained. Credit Suisse clients have been calling me for the last six months. Since the UBS takeover, calls are coming every day. Everyone wants the Credit Suisse financial crisis explained. The crisis is more of a bad image crisis than a financial crisis. The most frequent question is, which bank is super safe for depositing the assets? Investors are scared. The Credit Suisse bondholders who lost 16 billion Swiss francs are angry and furious. The pension fund of Migros, Switzerland's biggest supermarket chain, lost 100 million with Credit Suisse Coco bonds or additional tier 1 bonds. They ask for justice. A dozen of US law firms are preparing class actions against UBS, FINMA, uh, the, the Swiss National Bank and the Swiss government. They want me to cooperate. In this video, I will disclose my opinion, including the arguments of the 81 bondholders for a class action or whatever action. I will tell you how I answered the phone calls. Stay with me. Don't go away. Caputo and Partners, SwissBankingLawyers.com. We fight for your money. My name is Enzo Caputo. I'm a Swiss banking lawyer. I have been engaged as a banking lawyer and compliance officer for the old UBS group. I was the CEO of the Swiss Association of Asset Manager. Today, I run the boutique law firm Caputo and Partners and the blog SwissBankingLawyers.com. That's the place where successful international business people like you find tips and solutions to better protect your assets with Swiss banks, make more money and pay less tax. We fight for your money. One US bank after the other goes bust. That's a fact. Crypto-friendly lender Silvergate collapses. We have Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank and the First Republic collapsing. And now Credit Suisse? Credit Suisse is 166 years old. In 2018, the bank has a market capitalization of 49 billion Swiss francs and was acquired by UBS for the ridiculous amount of 3 billion Swiss francs. What the hell happens with one of the most relevant banks on the planet? On the 19th of March, the Swiss National Bank pledged a loan for up to 100 billion Swiss francs to support the takeover. The Swiss government also issued a guarantee to reduce any risk for UBS. Here is the key question. Is the Credit Suisse collapse just another domino in the collapse of the world's banking system or it is something else? The Swiss finance minister Karin Keller-Sutter stated, this is a commercial solution and not a bailout. I want to be very clear now. Here is my opinion. There are no similarities at all to be compared to the failures of banks in the US. In the US, we have a casino banking mentality with highly speculative transactions that earned, ended in a financial disaster. This is not the case with Credit Suisse. The crisis of Credit Suisse started a long time ago with a series of scandals and wrong decisions of the top management. Credit Suisse has a very competent and open-minded staff with an excellent international network. However, if the reputation of a bank is everything, because of the lack of trust and the diminishing reputation, many clients left the bank. In 2005, Credit Suisse had 1.3 trillion Swiss francs in deposits. In 2022, Credit Suisse had only 531 billion in deposits. Here is the truth. There is not one bank on the planet that can survive if all clients are asking for money back on the same day. In such a situation, even banks having strong balance sheets are confronted with liquidity issues. A few days before the 19th of March, the Saudi National Bank, an important shareholder of Credit Suisse, refused to go above the 10% ownership of Credit Suisse. Thursday, the 16th of March, Credit Suisse asked the Swiss National Bank for a liquidity injection of 50 billion Swiss francs. The Swiss National Bank accepted. Instead of sending Credit Suisse to UBS, the Swiss National Bank should support Credit Suisse with liquidity injections until its credibility will be restored. Unfortunately, three days later, the Swiss government announced that there is a merger with UBS supported by FINMA, the Swiss financial government and the Swiss National Bank. The Swiss National Bank guarantees liquidity. The Swiss National Bank should have support the Credit Suisse, same as to the statement of Mario Gravi, Draghi, whatever it takes. 
whatever it takes and not sell the bank to UBS for 3 million Swiss francs only. Here is the share price calculation. 22.48 Credit Suisse shares in exchange for one UBS share. This is a very good deal for the shareholders of UBS, but a financial disaster for the Credit Suisse Coco bondholders. A financial disaster for the bondholders. Coco means contingent convertible bonds. The bonds are additional tier 1 bonds or 81 bonds. Normally bondholders have always a privileged position compared to shareholders. In this deal the opposite is the case. It's crazy. The Credit Suisse 81 bondholders also known as Coco bonds are asking for justice. I fully understand their attitude. For example the pension fund of Migros, the leading Swiss supermarket chain, lost 100 million Swiss francs with Coco bonds. I will do my best to help them with the support of US lawyers. We are composing a team of US and Swiss lawyers. What happened to the bondholders is not correct, is not fair. How is the situation with the Coco bondholders? Let me explain. Contrary to what happened in the US with Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in New York, there was never at any time any capital requirement issue for Credit Suisse and therefore nothing nothing that would trigger either the conversion into stocks or even less the write-off of these bonds. There were presentations and confirmations from Credit Suisse, UBS and the Swiss National Bank confirming this up until Friday the 17th of March before the weekend of the deal. Filma backed its decision based on a change in law, sort of an emergency law that took place post-announcement of the deal. From the legal point of view, the legal basis for the application of emergency law stays on, on thin ice. The Swiss Parliament still must approve the, the, the change on April 12th and there could be some hope that it does not approve it. The ongoing case and the calls with other Swiss and US lawyers, asset managers and fund managers are showing that legal actions, including class actions, are going to be filed very soon in Switzerland and in the US. The legal institution of a class action does not exist in Switzerland. Losing 60 billion Swiss francs means losing a lot of money. Assuming there was a trigger and capital adequacy of Credit Suisse was below 7% at the given point and based on the current share price of UBS and Credit Suisse, one would expect that these COCO bonds or additional tier 1 bonds, so-called 81 bonds, could have been converted into Credit Suisse common stock. The market value of the 17.6 billion US dollar nominal would be around 4.5 billion US dollar. That's roughly 25% of the face value of the bonds. Considering the coupons already received on these bonds in general, the recovery rate would be around 50%. However, this is bad, but better than nothing. These 4.5 billion US dollar would obviously be an additional amount that UBS would have to purchase to do the transaction and it is obvious that it is UBS that forced Filma to order the write-off of these 81 bonds as an imperative condition, a conditio sine qua non to do the deal. On March 15, the Swiss National Bank published that Credit Suisse meets all capital requirements and that the Swiss National Bank provides liquidity to support Credit Suisse. In other words, a write-down was extremely Im Im impossible after the comment of the Swiss National Bank. Four days later, on 19 March, Finma ordered the write-off of all 81 capital out of the blue. There were no capital adequacy issues. The common equity tier 1 capital ratio, also known as the CET1 of Credit Suisse, end of 2022 was 14.1% and there were no public capital support measures taken. There is no legal basis for FINMA action to order a write-off at from these bonds based on existing law. On what legal basis was the FINMA decision made? The law prior to March 19 did not allow for a FINMA order to write off the bonds outside of the restructuring proceedings. Therefore, on March 19, the Swiss government adopted law essentially opening the door for FINMA eventually order a write-off of these bonds. This was law, this law was adopted in an overnight decision and has not been approved by the Swiss parliament yet. The legal basis is missing. That was a shot from the hip. Arguments against the issuer are that March 15 Credit Suisse disclosed no issues. 
This could be seen as a lack of disclosure and mis-selling, especially if Credit Suisse already know, knew that the deal with UBS would be enforced. Arguments against the Swiss government are that the key question is if it, the trigger for a write-down was appropriate. If not, the FINMA decision would potentially qualify as expropriation. Foreign investors could use the so-called bilateral investment treaty claims Switzerland has in place with many countries due to expropriation and the fair and equitable treatment of foreign investors. This must be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Victims that lost money will now try to form a group of investors who are interested in a more detailed analysis of the situation and potential claims to protect the rights of the bondholders. At the end of the day, among the bondholders, we have the employees of the supermarket Migros. These are the beneficiaries of the Migros pension fund that lost 100 million Swiss francs. I have composed a team of US and Swiss lawyers. The formalization of our cooperation is pending. After the signing of our cooperation agreement, we will indicate very soon where victims can register to be part of a group with the final goal to file legal actions, including class action. Credit Suisse has a very successful domestic banking sector. Domestic banking is doing very well. Here is my opinion. It was a mistake to kill the domestic banking business. The problems of Credit Suisse are connected to the international clientele. The challenge is to keep international clients on board. I saw it based on my phone calls. My clients are international. Only very few clients of my law firm are Swiss. 95% of my clients are international. They immediately changed the bank. They are not loyal to the bank anymore. The younger international clients are the faster they change the bank. Clients having a certain age are more loyal to their bank. The most posed question was how did Credit Suisse lose money? Here is the answer. Credit Suisse did the same mistake as Deutsche Bank. Credit Suisse survived the financial crisis of 2008 relatively well. The success during the crisis in 2008 made the bank more confident in taking risks in the international investment banking business. As a Swiss bank, you should do wealth management and that's it. Only the big US banking monsters can really be successful in the international investment banking industry. Like JP Morgan, which is the result of multiple merged US banks. This is a monster of a bank. The old CEO of UBS, Sergio Armotti, is a smart banker. He will be the new CEO of UBS in a couple of days. Sergio Armotti's reputation is impeccable. He is a super professional. He will, it will any, however, it will not be easy for him, but he will do a good job. I'm convinced. He will do it better than any other banker. He is familiar with the Swiss political elite. He recognizes the high risks of investment banking and the low risk of wealth management many years ago. He recognized the importance of wealth management. He conducted UPS from one successful year to the next successful year. The gigantic investment banking dream of Credit Suisse was a terrible mistake. If you are following my videos, you know exactly that the safest banks the safest Swiss banks are the banks with only one business model. That is wealth management and nothing else. That's it. No derivatives, no risky lending activities, no investment banking, no trade finance, but just wealth management. Information just like this cannot be found in universities, not in libraries and not in bibliotheques and not in the internet. If you like more information just like this, please show it to me. Please like share and subscribe to my YouTube channel now and ring the bell. By doing so, you will never miss a new video. If you like, you have your money protected in a Swiss fortress. If you want to achieve peace of mind, if you want a best in class wealth manager to grow your money step by step, write me an email or pick up the phone now and give me a call. Dial the number below 0041442124404. Let's discuss the best solution for you. Let's discuss how to keep your legally earned money safe with one of the safest banks on earth. Be rich and remain rich. Have a wonderful day.